What if I told you that scientists are working on bringing back animals that have been extinct for thousands of years? Imagine a mammoth walking through Siberia again, or a dodo roaming once more on Mauritius. Sounds like science fiction? It's happening now, in our time. Thanks to huge advances in genetics, DNA reconstruction, and biotechnology, it is becoming possible to revive animals we once thought were gone forever. This process is called de-extinction, and it brings us closer to a future where extinct may no longer mean permanent. In this video, you'll discover seven of the most remarkable animals that scientists are seriously trying to bring back. But one big question remains. Should we actually do it? The first animal in this video is the dire wolf. The dire wolf, or Anoceon dirus, was one of the most famous predators of the Ice Age. It lived in North and South America and was larger and sturdier than the modern gray wolf. With its powerful jaws, it could crush bones and likely hunted in packs, targeting large prey such as horses and bison. Fossils from the La Brea tar pits in California have revealed a great deal about its lifestyle and behavior. About 10,000 years ago, the dire wolf disappeared probably due to a mix of climate change and the loss of its main prey. Recently, biotechnology has put this animal back in the spotlight. In 2024 and 2025, three pups were born as part of a project by Colossal Biosciences. Using DNA fragments from the extinct dire wolf and advanced gene editing in gray wolves, they created animals showing some traits of the ancient species. The pups were named Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi. Although these are not exact dire wolves, but genetically modified gray wolves, the experiment demonstrates what modern science is capable of. It provides insight into extinct species and raises questions about the future of de-extinction. Before we continue, don't let our community go extinct. Subscribe today. The next animal is the woolly mammoth. The woolly mammoth may be the most famous candidate for de-extinction. This giant elephant species lived during the last ice age and was fully adapted to the cold. Its thick fur, small ears, and fat layer helped it survive in the tundras of Eurasia and North America. About 4,000 years ago, it went extinct, likely from a combination of climate change and human hunting. Thanks to well-preserved remains found in permafrost, scientists have access to large amounts of DNA. At Colossal Biosciences, researchers are working on inserting mammoth genes into the DNA of the Asian elephant, its closest living relative. The goal is to create a hybrid elephant with mammoth traits, such as thick fur and cold resistance. This project is seen not only as a spectacular scientific challenge, but also as a potential way to restore ecosystems. Mammoths helped maintain Arctic grasslands. By bringing back similar animals, scientists hope permafrost will stay frozen longer, helping to slow climate change. While many challenges remain, the woolly mammoth seems like the most realistic candidate to return in the near future. The third animal is the dodo. The dodo, a flightless bird about one meter tall, lived only on Mauritius. When humans arrived in the 17th century, the bird quickly became a symbol of vulnerability. Within just decades, it was wiped out by hunting, habitat loss, and invasive animals such as rats and pigs. The last reliable sighting dates back to 1,662. For scientists, the dodo is an important example of how quickly human activity can wipe out a species. Thanks to preserved bones and tissue samples, researchers have reconstructed dodo DNA. They are now trying to combine this with genetic material from the Nicobar pigeon, its closest living relative. The ultimate goal is to insert dodo traits into pigeon cells and create a new embryo. Though still in an early stage, the project shows how close science is getting. The dodo's return would not only be symbolic, but could also help restore ecosystems on Mauritius, where it once played a role in seed dispersal. The next animal is the thylacine. The thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger, was a marsupial native to Australia, Tasmania, and New Guinea. Despite its wolf-like appearance, it was not a wolf at all, but a carnivorous marsupial related to kangaroos and koalas, with its striped back, it was the top predator in its ecosystem. Intensive hunting, habitat loss, and disease drove the species to extinction in the 20th century. The last known thylacine died in 1936 in a zoo in Hobart, Tasmania. Since then, 
it has become a symbol of human impact on nature and biodiversity. Today, scientists are exploring ways to bring the thylacine back. DNA from museum specimens is being compared with that of closely related marsupials, like the Dunart. Using genetic engineering and advanced reproductive technology, they hope to create an embryo carrying thylacine traits. If successful, it would be a major breakthrough not only scientifically, but also ecologically. The return of the thylacine could restore balance in Tasmania's ecosystem and show that humanity may be able to partly undo past mistakes. The fifth animal is the giant moa. The giant moa was an enormous flightless bird that lived in New Zealand. Females could grow over three meters tall, making them among the largest birds ever. Moa had no wings and fed on leaves, branches, and fruit. Alongside the host's eagle, which hunted them, they formed a unique ecosystem. When Polynesian settlers arrived about 700 years ago, everything changed. Intense hunting and deforestation led to the extinction of all nine moa species within a few centuries. By the time Europeans reached New Zealand, the moa was already gone. Today, scientists are studying whether moa DNA can be used for partial revival. Though the DNA recovered from bones and eggs is damaged, it may be combined with genetic material from the kiwi, its closest living relative. The project is still in its infancy, but the moa's return would not only be a milestone in science, it would also give insight into isolated ecosystems. It would be a powerful reminder that extinction may not always be final. The sixth animal is the aurochs. The aurochs was the ancestor of modern cattle. This impressive species roamed across Europe, Asia, and North Africa, and could stand up to two meters tall. With its massive horns and powerful build, it was a key part of ancient ecosystems. The last known aurochs died in 1,627 in Poland. Although the species went extinct, its genetic legacy survives in domestic cattle. Many modern breeds still carry aurochs genes, making it relatively feasible to recreate an animal resembling the original through selective breeding or genetic engineering. Projects like Tauros and Rewilding Europe are already breeding cattle that closely resemble aurochs in appearance and behavior. The goal is not just to revive an iconic animal, but to restore nature. Aurochs-like cattle can help keep landscapes open by grazing, promoting biodiversity, while debate continues over whether this counts as a true aurochs, the project shows that extinction doesn't always mean the end of an ecological role. The final animal is the bucardo. The bucardo, a subspecies of the Spanish ibex, lived in the Pyrenees and was adapted to steep mountain slopes. Due to hunting and habitat loss, the population dwindled quickly, and in 2000 the last individual, a female named Celia, died making the species officially extinct. But just three years later, a scientific first occurred. Researchers used DNA from Celia's skin cells to create a clone. With a domestic goat as a surrogate, a bucardo was born the first extinct animal to return. Sadly, the newborn survived only a few minutes due to breathing problems, but the experiment proved that de-extinction is technically possible. Since then, the bucardo has become both a symbol of hope and a reminder of the enormous challenges in reviving vanished species. From the mighty mammoth to the mysterious thylacine, the idea of these animals returning sounds like science fiction, but with every scientific breakthrough, it becomes more realistic. Yet one big question remains, should we actually do this? Some believe bringing these species back could help restore ecosystems and correct the mistakes of the past. Others fear that playing with nature carries huge risks. Imagine these animals disrupting our modern world or going extinct all over again. What do you think? Would you welcome the return of these creatures or should we let them rest in the past? Share your opinion in the comments. I'd love to know. And don't forget to subscribe for more fascinating stories about science, nature, and the future. Because this is only the beginning.